Julian Castro. He actually just released a plan to reform policing in the US saying it's a way to honor the memory of lives cut short by police brutality during interactions with the police. So let's break it down. It's the people first policing plan, all right? And this is what he says, he says, we have on our hands a national crisis in public safety. If elected president Julian Castro would treat this as the crisis it is, demanding of a federal response. This is Julian's plan to fix this broken system. Number one, end over aggressive policing and combat racially discriminatory policing, excuse me. And that's broken down is, in establishing national standards for the conduct of police officers and local departments that receive federal funding, we ensure that every police department in the United States establishes minimum standards for how their officers interact with community members. Those standards include combating racially discriminatory policing that leads to the disproportionately high number of black men who are killed by police. And then we go into step two, which is hold police accountable. And he kind of explains that as uh, making changes in the federal government and saying, including the Department of Justice's Civil Rights Division, he's gonna hold accountable law enforcement agencies for use of excessive force. And that process, he says, starts with transparency and data. So step three is start the healing process between communities and law enforcement. Explaining that, saying with new policing guidelines and increased accountability, law enforcement and community members are better able to build a culture of trust. And he actually wants to use an executive order to demilitarize the police and work with state and local law enforcement to deprioritize enforcement of minor offenses that don't impact public safety in an effort to limit over policing in communities. So a lot going on, there's a video I have of him as well because as a lot of people pointed out, this is something he's been talking about since he launched his campaign. So take a look at something he said during his campaign launch. If police in Charleston can arrest Dylan Roof after he murdered nine people worshiping at Bible study without hurting him, then don't tell me that Michael Brown and Tamir Rice and Ayanna Jones and Eric Garner and Jason Carroll and Stephon Clark and Sandra Bland shouldn't still be alive today. Wow. I thought this was strong. I thought the policy, I, I think that oftentimes po- politicians are wary of discussing issues mm-hmm. within the ways we police in yeah. the United States. So I think it's interesting because I do think it's a start. Okay. Um, but I do think that we scapegoat the cops a lot. Like I'm, I think that the the problem is deeper than that. It's a systemic issue, and it goes all the way up to politics. I mean, haven't you guys seen The Wire? But um, it's so uh, interesting to just blame police for what's going on, but not holding accountable what's above police uh-huh. because. Police officers are blue collar workers, and yes, a lot of the egregious acts. Uh, they should be held accountable for as as people and as uh, you know civil servants, but we cannot ignore what is continuous continuously enabling this problem. And I think that that is why we don't get to the the solution because it's easy to say we're going to demilitarize the police. Mm-hmm. Why are they in that situation in the first place? In the first place, this is true. You know, it's very, it's it's more, it's very political. Um, I would like to see other things too. I want to see them um, investigating law enforcement and finding uh, the people who belong to white supremacist groups and getting them out of there. The FBI did release a report saying that there were, uh, there was a, an obscene number of police officers that belong to white supremacy groups and that they're doing that the you know those groups that groups work. Um, I think it's just very. Uh, it, I love it. I'm glad that somebody's actually talking about it because I think that talking about it is the beginning. Mm-hmm. But I think that some of the stuff seems a little bit idealistic. You like, think so? Yeah. Like yeah. how how are you going to uh, reduce aggressive behavior where people who are improperly trained and innately aggressive in the first place, and that's probably why they're being hired as police officers. You know, there's an education that needs to go in. Uh, there's also uh, the zoning. Like, why are you putting police officers that are imp- not familiar with the hood in the hood? This That's probably the bigger 
bigger problem, you know? And when you really wanna create community relationships, we, I, I met with LAPD. We were supposed to be working on something to actually uh, create inroads, uh, creating more opportunities for officers of color, of people of color, women of color, so that uh, those communities are being policed by people who are familiar with the neighborhoods. But there's a lot of talk, but when it comes to action, um, I just feel like people don't follow through. And you know, I, I just really wanna see um, some more specific stuff in terms of mental uh, health care, you know, trauma training. Like those are the reasons why cops are, you know, how are you gonna create a community a relationship with the community when you can't even be honest about the problem in the first place? No, that's right. I like that you pointed that out, that it is the system because I think even in Baltimore when talking about, mm -hmm. and I know we have to move on, but in Baltimore when talking about uh, the policing and the issues with the police in Baltimore, uh, somebody, a police chief from a while ago said something that I was like, oh, I can't believe I never even looked at it that way, that um, hiring more black officers doesn't fix the system. Even though you should, obviously your police department should be diverse, but if the system is broken, yeah. you just anybody new that you hire just falls into that. Thank you for watching this clip from The Damage Report. For more content from the show and access to TYT Network members only exclusives, go to tyt.com slash Brooke. Wait, no, it's tyt.com slash John. Go to tyt.com slash John to sign up.